Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So today we will be having our 11th lecture and we will be talking about combinational design procedures. So before starting, let's have uh, a recap regarding the previous lecture because uh, that lecture is important regarding combinational design procedure. So in the previous lecture we have discussed about the design uh, analysis procedures right that we will be using or that are important regarding the design procedures right. So in the analysis uh, procedure right we discussed about the combination circuits right and uh, then we talked about the sequential circuits and we uh, also uh, elaborated the difference between those circuits right different type of circuits that uh, how uh, we can represent a combinational circuits right uh, that uh, we only need to represent the output as a function of input variables right but as far as sequential circuit is concerned we need a memory element right because we have to remember the previous state right so this is something different from combination circuits then we talked about the analysis procedures right different analysis approaches and uh, there are two approaches we which we discussed uh, in the last lecture that for uh, uh, analysis on the basis of pooling expressions and then we can also use uh, truth tables regarding the analysis right so, and the objective of the analysis is that uh, we can have uh, a very concrete sort of uh, representation right, by using minimum number of gates right and we can always uh, have a very uh, critical analysis regarding the all uh, variables right so uh, that's that's what we talked about and we also uh, taken few examples started uh, starting from the simple one uh, a two level circuit then we move to the more complicated example where we have multiple inputs and multiple outputs and we perform circuit analysis right on the basis of those different use cases right so that's uh, a brief overview of uh, the previous lecture or recap of the previous, lec previous lecture right so let's start so today we will be having uh, uh, digital design right right of circuits right? and their specifications and then uh, we always know we already know we already have uh, specified different digital circuits right uh, in terms of their input variable right if you have a digital circuit and you have to represent its its output so what normally we do we represent the output as a function of input variables right so we must know the input and output right if we talk about the digital design right and then uh, what we can do we can start from the truth table right and uh, for simplification we can also use kmap there are different other options but uh, here we will be using kmap for simplification right and then uh, we have to represent as some of the products right but in a minimized representation right and ultimately uh, we will be plotting or dis uh, drawing the final circuit right which we got which we get after the as after going through those number of steps right so as we are following uh, the text textbook by Morris Mano right so uh, you you can uh, you will realize that uh, all the stuff is available there so we will be following the design procedures from Morris Mano right so uh, let's uh, start we have to design a circuit 
from a specification, right? So what we need to do, we uh, have to go through certain number of steps. First, we will uh, be uh, determining the number of uh, inputs and outputs, right? And after uh, having the number of input and output, right, we can have uh, multiple input, multiple output, right? So uh, then after having the input and output, we will be driving the truth table, right? And uh, then we will be uh, simplifying uh, the Boolean expressions, right? You can use uh, KMAP or you can use different Boolean axioms, but uh, the uh, advantage of using KMAP is that we will be following a predefined number of steps, right? First, we will plot, right, or map uh, the truth table onto the K map, then we will be looking for different groupings, and after those groupings, we will be having the simplified Boolean expression, right? And then uh, finally, we will be drawing the circuit diagram and we will verify the circuit by applying those possible combinations, right? So here you can see that we have uh, the number of inputs, we have uh, a, B, C, right? And we have R and S, right? So you can see we have an R operation between A, B, C regarding S, and for the R, we have the AND operation, right? So you, we have all the possible combinations that A, B, C can have. So there are three variables, so uh, we can have 2 raised to power 3, right? 8 different number of combinations, right? So, as we all know that we can use Boolean laws, axioms in order to simplify the expressions, right? But uh, as uh, I have mentioned that we have not uh, a predefined number of steps in order to have a simplified expression by using those Boolean laws and axiom, right? Although we can have the simplification, but this is all always not uh, uh, the. You you have to be very very careful. Like right? maybe you have to uh, combine different uh, expressions with terms within uh, a Boolean expression, right? And then you have to uh, apply different Boolean axioms, and finally you get the uh, minimized or simplified expression, right? But this is. Uh, not always guaranteed that this is the final or ultimate simplification or you cannot simplify more. But if you have uh, uh, simplification uh, by using K-maps, then you have to define or you have to follow a uh, predefined number of steps. First, you will map uh, your Boolean expression or your uh, uh, truth table onto the K map, then you will be l looking for different groupings. First, you will be looking for quads, then squares, then pairs, and, and then you can flip or you can bend the uh, K map for possible number of combinations, right? So these are the uh, steps which you follow in a predefined order. So in that way, you can guarantee that uh, you have the simplified expression. But on the other hand, if you are using the uh, Boolean laws or axioms, uh, you have to be very, very sharp, right? So there are chances that you are thinking that you have simplified your Boolean expression, but you can have more simplification. So you have to be very, very careful when you are using Boolean algebra for simplification, right? So uh, it is not obvious, right? You cannot say for sure that you have attained the ultimate simplification, right? So then uh, we have to represent the uh, function, Boolean function. So th there are a number of ways to represent the function. We can use Boolean expressions, right? We can also uh, use truth table then we can draw the logic circuit, right? We can also represent them in terms of max terms and min, min terms. We can also have a K-map K -map representation. So there are a number of ways uh, by using them we can 
represent a boolean function right okay so uh, we will be focusing on combinational logic design regarding the design analysis right so so what uh, we will be doing uh, we will be using any one of the representations right uh, then uh, we can take help right from the graphical representation for simplification right and uh, we can also use don't care conditions because by using don't care conditions we can have more simplified boolean expression right and uh, as a use case as, a, as an example we will be uh, solving a bcd to seven segment display right okay so let's start uh, the design procedure right so here you can see we have a seven segment display right so we have a bcd to seven segment display uh, so you know that we uh, have uh, uh, zero right it is represented by zero 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 because we have to uh, encode right uh, decimal a bcd to decimal right so we will be representing zero to nine because we all know that we have zero to nine for a decimal right so but we will be using bcd seven segment display so we have a representation corresponding binary representation for each decimal number zero we have zero 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 right for one we have zero zero one and two and so and so forth so you can see we started from zero and we reached till nine so we need four bits in order to represent a, a decimal number into a binary number that we all know right so this is the seven segment display right you can see that we have seven different segments if you start from a this is a one segment right if i number them right this is b this is segment number two right and this is c this is segment number three and this is d this is segment number four right and this is e this is segment number five right and this is F and this is segment number six right and this is G segment number seven so that's why we say BCD to seven segment display right so uh, as uh, we know that we because we already know the BCD use it uses zeros and ones to represent decimal digits right and binary coded decimal represent each decimal digit with four bits right so uh, you can see that we have a sort of uh, decimal digit and this is the binary equivalent of that decimal number right so we have seven segment display problem over here so uh, what we need to do we have to name those different segments right list the segments that should be illuminated for each digit right for example if you talk about the five right so for five uh, if you have an idea of a digital watch right so we have to uh, eliminate a then c then d then f and g right so you can see that for five we have to glow right or turn on a c d f g right so similarly if you talk about two you can see that we have to uh, glow this right and then this right and then this right and then this right so this is two so you can see that we have to eliminate a right b right if i follow the order then d then e and then g right so e Similarly, you can look for other combinations. For example, if you talk about seven, so you can see that we have to turn on A, B, and C, right? A, B, C for seven, right? So this is the truth table, right? We have to drive the truth table. So these are the uh, decimals. And you can see that we are using four bits, but we are only using 10 combinations. And rest of the six combinations, they are not 
being used. So you can see 000, 0, 0, 0, 0 001 and we reached 1008 plus 2, 10, right? So we have only 10 different combinations over here. So this is the output, right? If you talk about 0, right? So for 0, what uh, different segments you have to make? make them glow. So for zero, we have A, B, C, D, E, F. So if you look here, for zero, we have A, B, C, D, E. All has to be eliminated, right? And similarly, if you talk about one, right? You go back, you talk about one. So you can see that we have zero, B, C, right? So we have to turn on B and C, so this part of the seven segment display, right? So this is the truth table. So let's, uh, if we talk about, we can see that we have labeled the inputs, right? Which are the uh, binary equivalent of the decimal numbers, right? We have labeled them W, X, Y, and here we have A, B, C, D, E, and so on and so forth, right? because we have E, F, G. We have seven segments, so these are the output. So if you talk about A, if we focus on A, so what you can do, this is the segment A from the input, and this, these are the uh, output, and these are the inputs, right? And what we have to do, we have to map this uh, output that is representing segment A, over to this K maps. So you can see that if you I started counting, right? So this is zero, one, two, and so and so forth. So let me write here. So here we have M naught, right? And this is what? M one, right? This is M two. This is M three. So I'm uh, using M's for min terms, right? So this is what? M4, right? M5, and then we have M6 and M7, right? Okay, so here we move, we jump from here to here, right? In the last row, right? So this is M8 and M9. So we reached M9, right? So we have 0 to decimal over here if you look at here. And now you have to focus on A, right? So this is A. This is A. Here, we have A here. So you have to plot or you have to map. So if you talk about, right? So this is A. And if I write here, state away. This is M not M1, M2. I don't know what this means, so I will write here M9, right? M8, and this is M7, right? And you can also have different M's in between. So here we have 1, so we've, I plotted 1, right? 0, and this is M2, this is 1, 3 is also 1, 4, 0. So we have this mapping, right? And then what we did over here, so if you look at here, so these uh, M's, they are empty, right? We have not anything over there. So you can, what you can do, you can have don't care conditions over there, right? So don't care means you can take it uh, as zero, or as one according to your design, right? If I focused on more simplified expression, so I can take them as ones and, uh, right? And then what is the next step, right? We will be looking for groupings, different groupings in order to have simplified, right? Or reduced implementation, right? So if you look here, we have a quad here, right? So this quad will be the first grouping, so, and we are solving 
are focusing on segment A, so I named it FA, and this is the first grouping. So I will be getting Y as a result of this grouping. Then we have another grouping over here. This is also a quad, so we will be having uh, another quad over here. So this is the second grouping, and uh, we are focusing on segment A, so this is F A2 and we will be having W right right so uh, if you look here right how you get this so if I consider uh, this vertical so we have W X right plus W X bar so W is common right X plus X bar right so I will be having right so this is the simplification then uh, if I talk about this horizontal row then what we will be having because we are having y bar z bar right plus y bar z plus y z and plus y z bar right so if i take y bar as common so i will be having z plus z bar and from here i take y common so z plus z bar right so this is one this is also one so i will be having y plus y bar and that is also y right so when we consider this quad so I have to multiply this with this right multiply the column with the rows so I will be left 1 into 1 into W and I will get W right so this is the way out you are reducing your implementation and then what we will be having if you look at those corners you can bend horizontally right and then you give up one more bend vertically then you can have this scare right those corners right so um, as a result so as uh, this is the third grouping because we have the two grouping before so I named it a3 right x bar z bar and then if you look at the center of this 4 cross 4 right table right then you will find that we have another grouping that is a square right at the center right at the center of this representation so this is the fourth grouping so I named it a4 and we will be having x z so again here what you will be doing uh, you will be considering uh, like uh, for example, I have to consider this, right, and this, right. So let me talk about this. So here we have uh, in the horizontal. So I have y bar z, right, right, plus y z, right. So here, uh, what? We are left with y plus y bar, so that is z, right? So if you talk about this, so we we have w bar x, right, and plus w x, right? So we will take common w plus w bar, right? So we are left with. So I have to multiply this right? column into rows. So, um, and we will get x, z, right? So this is the fourth grouping. So finally, what we will be having, uh, we have to add all those different groupings, right? So you can see that we have the final expression for segment A, y plus w plus x bar, z bar plus x, z bar, right? And so this is the example of 
seven segment display right you can see and uh, e this is uh, uh, the representation by using a software tool that is circuit maker right and we will be learning this tool after a number of lectures and by using that tool you can design your circuits right and you can simulate them and you can also have the visual uh, interpretation or you can see graphically and visually and you can analyze your circuits after designing and interconnecting different uh, components right so here you can see we have an IC here we have uh, four uh, different inputs A B C D right and these are the control signals clock clock again and here uh, we start the counting right and then you can see that we have the uh, different segments for segment A right uh, so for 5 you can see that the segment A has to glow so we will be having in more detail how we normally use this software in order to design and develop different circuits right so then uh, if you talk about uh, B right so you can see that uh, we have uh, the input right over here right w x y z and then we have uh, different segments right so for b if you talk about zero b has to glow if you talk about one b again has to glow if you have a look at here right right here so you can have an idea that uh, how uh, when B has to glow. So here we have a B for, right? So we have a B for 0, again B for 1, right? So 1, 1, right? 1, 1, 1, right? So for 5, B should not glow, right? For 6 also, right? 7, it has to glow for 8 and 9, right? So if you Right. So here you can see that uh, for 5 it should not glow, right? But for 8 and 9 we have seen that it must glow, right? And similarly we uh, have to map this, right? So you can see that uh, 0, 1, we have a 1 at 0, 1, right? 1, then 2, right? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? 8 and 9. If you look at 8 and 9, so here we have a 1, here we have a 1, right? So you can see that we have mapped, right, all the different uh, output values regarding the B, right? So now the ne next step is to have, because we can have uh, uh, don't care conditions over here, right? So let me use the pen, right? So you can use don't care conditions over there, right? right. So then you can have maximum simplification. So here we have the first grouping, right? So we are uh, talking about B and this is the first grouping, so you can see we have W, right? So again, if uh, I talk, or if I try to solve this simplification, then this is the column and this is the row, right? So what we will be doing, right? We will be having, right? Uh, here, if you talk about this, wx, right? And wx bar. Right? So we will be having wx plus wx bar, right? W common X plus X bar that is one so W right and this is regarding this uh, vertical direction if you talk about horizontal direction so what we have to do right we have to Y bar Z bar right plus Y bar Z right plus Y Z plus Y Z bar right and we will be taking y bar as common z plus z bar right plus y again common z plus z bar right so here you can see 
and then uh, we will be having so we will be having y plus y bar plus y and that is always equal to 1 right so then we have another grouping right so you can see that we have a column whole column this one right this one right this whole column right and as a result of this column we will because this is the second grouping and we will uh, are we are considering B so B2 Y bar Z bar and then we have another row this is also another grouping third grouping and we are having W bar X bar right another column right this is the third column and we will be having the fourth grouping so B4 YZ and these this is the uh, overall representation of this right so you can see that we have uh, uh, W right when we are uh, we are having this uh, chord right and then we are having Y bar Z bar right and then W bar X bar right if you go back so Y bar Z bar due to this column so Y bar Z bar right due to this column and then we have Y bar Z so this is Y Z and Y bar Z bar right and this is W bar X bar right and you can have more uh, not the simplification but at least you can join them so if you look here we have w plus w bar x bar right y z plus y bar z bar so what i did over here i have used boolean expressions and boolean ex axioms right so if uh, we talk about a plus a bar b that is equal to a plus b so similarly if i have w plus w bar x bar so uh, what I can do I can have w plus x bar right so let me see, see. right so I uh, by using the boolean axiom right so this is what this is x nor right so if I have uh, a is equal to a bar b plus a b bar right I have to take the whole complement so what I will be having a double bar right plus B bar right so, so first I have to break the line change the sign so right so here we have a very little place so let me solve it here right a bar B right right so we have the whole bar break the line change the sign so we will be having a bar B a B bar whole right so here we have a bar plus B bar double bar right let me put a bracket here so a bar right plus B double bar so what I can do I can multiply state away so those bars they will cancel each other so I will be having a dot a bar plus B right then I have a a bar right plus a B plus a bar B bar plus B B bar so those will cancel out right I'm oh, sorry this one and uh, we are left with a b plus a bar b bar right so this is what i have did over here i have represented it by a complemented zor or you can say x nor right so this is the simplified more simplified expression right so then we can have another example regarding the design so we over here we have a bcd to xs3 code converter the uh, normally the uh, those sort of uh, encoders uh, we or converters we use whenever 
we have an output right and then that output has to be provided to another part of a circuit as an input right so normally we for there is a mismatch there can be a mismatch right between the two parts right so for to uh, overcome that sort of mismatch what we need to do we normally use encoders right or converters so here we have a bcd2 xs3 code so uh, the uh, methodology is here that uh, or the mechanism is uh, clear and obvious from this truth table you can see we have a decimal representation then we have a bcd representation and over here we have xs3 code so what normally we do we do so what normally we do we uh, have decimal then we have the binary representation and we add binary 3 to each corresponding decimal bcd representation right so this is one so we have uh, uh, one right bcd right? we add three binary three right if you talk about zero zero right one one right so this is binary three so we will be adding uh, this three to this zero 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 and then one so you can see that we will be having zero right carry over here zero right and then we have a, so this is the xs3 code for this decimal one or this bcd code right so similarly we will follow the same so let's have another a example right so if we talk about this right so it's zero zero one one right so what we need to do we need to add three right this is uh, zero right carry one right one carry one zero so you can see that we have one one zero so let's have a different example if you talk about zero one zero zero right this is four bcd four decimal four right and we have to add zero zero one one right one 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 so you can see that if you look here here zero one double zero zero one one right so this is the xs3 code right so what we need to do right so uh, if you look here if i represent this input right with uh, a b c d right and then this is the output i label them with w x y z right so uh, first i have to focus on w right so this is the k map for w and this is the k map for x right and this is the k map for y right and similarly we have the k map for z so you can see that we have we have uh, if you talk about the w so we have one over here five six seven eight nine right so you have to move here right so you can talk about this is zero one two three four five six seven right and right if you look here so we have uh, you consider the w right you are solving or mapping this right so we have uh, one at fifth place right corresponding to this fifth right or fifth or five and then six seven eight and nine so let's talk about this w right we have a b c d so can have zero one two three right four five six seven right and then we have eight nine right and rest of the positions they can be mapped by right using don't care conditions right because they are not being used right so here you we have uh, k map for x right and k map for y 
and similarly if you look at z we have uh, 1 at 0 right so after uh, every one we have a 0 1 0 1 0 so you can see that if you talk about this z 0 right 1 then 0 1 0 right 1 0 1 0 1 0 right so rest of the positions right they are we marked as don't care right so if uh, you have to define them right uh, in terms of main terms and don't care conditions so you can see that for w we have right so you can always represent right m this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, 6 7 and 8 9 so you can have 5 6 7 8 9 and rest of them are don't care similarly for x we have uh, 1 2 3 4 9 and for don't care we have 10 11 12 13 14 15 right and Similarly, we have a different. Now we will be minimizing for simplification. So we will be looking for different groupings. So if you talk about this, because first we have to look for the quads. So this is the quad. So you can see we have, uh, uh, for W, we have uh, a quad over here. So as a result, what we will be having, we will be having an A as a result of this quad. And then secondly we will be looking for scares so this is the scare right if uh, you talk about this scare right and what we will be having we will be having B right and the uh, BD right as a result of this scare and then BC as a result of this scare right so this is the minimized expression for W right and similarly we will be looking for x right so you can see that uh, we have a scare here right so as as a result of this scare what we will be having we will be having b c bar d bar right and then we will be uh, banding or you can say swap uh, horizontally then we have this scare right and then uh, this scare right two scares so we will be having b bar c and b bar d right so this is the minimization regarding x and then we have the minimization regarding y so you can see that uh, this is the representation for y right k map representation for y and we have this uh, grouping right which is a column first column so we have uh, c bar d bar right as a result of this grouping and for this grouping we have c d right so we have only two groupings for y right so we have two different terms c d and c bar d bar and for z uh, we can see if we swap it vertically right so we have we will be having a quad so as a result what we will be having we will be having a d bar right and then these are the equations right so if you look at w so what we can have we can have more uh, better representation if I take b as common right so I can represent this as a plus b into c plus d right and then ultimately what we will be doing we will be plotting or drawing the circuit diagram right so you can see that uh, this is w if you look at w we have uh, right a plus b into c d right so a plus b right and then we have c plus d right so if you a plus b into c plus d right and if you talk about uh, other right so we have for z we only have you can see for z we only have complemented right so z bar 
the bar right so you can see that this is the D and D is complemented that is equal to Z right okay so that's uh, all for today's lecture so let's conclude uh, today's lecture so we need to formulate circuits right uh, from problem descriptions right so we have to follow certain number of steps right uh, right uh, first you need to know the number of inputs and number of output and then uh, then you have to represent them in a proper format right you can uh, always uh, determine the truth table right you can also some other formats right and then we have to perform the simplification right and uh, ultimately finally we have to have some of the products minimal some of the products right and there can be different scenarios where we can have uh, multiple inputs right and one output and multiple inputs right and multiple outputs right and we can solve them uh, by following different strategy right if you have multiple inputs and one output then you have to follow uh, for example some uh, approach right and if you have multiple out input multiple output then you can always can handle it in another way right but uh, there's one thing that is very important to mention over here that we have man we have uh, followed the combinational design procedures right uh, while considering the combinational circuits and in combinational circuits or in combinational design we all know that we don't have the memory right uh, because we can represent output as a function of input variables right so we don't need to remember the previous states so that's why we don't need memory so we can represent all the combinational circuits by using the conventional and or not logic right so the combinational design circuit design procedures circuit analysis procedures they are much more simplified as compared to sequential circuit analysis and sequential circuit design then because you have to take into account the previous states you need a memory right so that uh, are much more complicated as compared to the combinational circuit analysis and circuit design so that's all for today's lecture uh, meri taraf se alafiz assalam alaikum